It's a little hard to believe that we've actually been around for two whole years now. Actually, what will be three Halloweens even? If there's only one thing you know for sure that you can count on us for, it's some top-notch spookiness for the All Hallowed season. We've talked zombies and cannibals, delivered some sweet ghost stories to tell, really in any lighting situation. Gave you one of literature's greatest cosmic horrors. We've tried our best to figure out one of Russia's most mysterious mysteries. And if so far, this holy season of horror dropped part one of what will apparently be three parts of a real-life contemporary witch story. Part two is here for your pleasurous listening right now. And hey, if you've got any ideas for a horrifying Halloween topic for this year's big night, email us at snhnsnpod at gmail.com. We listen. Because we care. It's coming like a ghost town. This beautiful Halloweeny month of October. Uh, uh, it is the second, the second episode of Chris's Witches, bitches, witches, bitches. and James and I are out on the veranda tonight recording because the weather is gorgeous. Stop looking at my shitty backyard like that, asshole. What? Mate, you have a nice backyard, man. Don't talk about your backyard. What like, be whatever, the degrees man, out here. over there? It's uh. I, comfortable degree. I mean, I could check, but it's it's probably like 70-something. 70 70 oh, that's not bad 70 for 70 there. 70-something-ish. That's not bad. No, no, it's it, it's still a little humid, and yes, there are uh, still a few mosquitoes out and about. A few mosquitoes. Uh, which we have doused ourselves in 40% DEET, which, if you know what Plus DEET is, Plus 60% shit. other ingredients. Yes, there are 60, <laughs> 60% of other ingredients <laughs> in this bottle. That we have sprayed ourselves with. That are probably uh, also toxic. Another spritz. <laughs> yeah, probably also very toxic. Carbon based. Uh, but the life. beauty is, and and this is this is really the the beautiful part of it all is that uh, outside right now, if we look up in the sky, guys, it's it's the full moon. It's an actual goddamn full moon because it is. It's October thirteenth, which is. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not exactly uh, Friday the thirteenth, but it's not exactly not Friday the thirteenth. That's true. When you it's, really think about that's it, that's true. And I'm very I merry. I actually really birthday. thought about it, and it's not Friday. It's it is a very very merry unbirthday to the both uh, of you. Which means that to me, well, that to you, no, Indeed. to you, no, just you, because an unbirthday means. You about to die. That's your death oh, day. it's seventy five. It's seventy five degrees outside. Seventy five. Yeah. It is a crispy fifty here in butt crack Indiana, just west of the state line of shithole Ohio and south of uh, Drawstain, fucking Michigan. What it sounds sorry, like. not sorry to all the fans yeah. that live in those places. Chris <laughs> just shit on. Yeah. Um, I mean, we shit. We we shit on every place. Yeah. So it's yeah. really we shit on our own place the most. So I mean, um, no, I think we hit Florida pretty bad. Well, that's Florida. But is, is, is Chris's. They're place. asking. Well, for as a trucker, I, mean, yeah, I they're also, also asking. <laughs> I also literally get to shit on and in every one of these places. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, and I make it a Blame point to do seat. so. Yeah. I, my my joke that I was going to say about uh, Florida asking for it uh, is just too good to pass up, and that is that uh, they, they are also asking for uh, for crystal meth. That's true. Uh, on a regular basis, mm. it's nonstop. Man, mm-hmm. yeah. it got real. Welcome to a two-time spooky episode of See No, Hear No, Speak No. Two-time on a couple of different occasions, actually. This is our second... Halloween as well to bring you the UFOs, third. conspiracies, and amoitas. Is it the third for reals? It's the third for real. What the yeah, because we got uh, like our our third or no fourth episode, maybe fourth or fifth episode was our first Halloween ah, special, that's right. which was uh, it, which had uh, uh, what's his name, uh, 
the uh, the, the Japanese cannibal. Uh, Issei, I can never remember his Issei name after Sagawa. Yeah, Issei Sagawa. Yeah, oh. and then uh, and also <laughs> the story of uh, Haitian uh, voodoo zombies, That's which was right. a, a great great good time. That was a good time. And then last year, last year we had uh, the Diet Love Pass incident which was was a lot of fun wow and this year it seems like it wasn't uh, i still a whole year ago the at love pass seems no like it, it seems was so very close, a so very recent. short very short time ago uh for that one wow. yeah but um this year i haven't quite figured out what the uh you know what the halloween special special is going to be but i'm sure that it'll be cool and if not uh you know uh, that's, We're shutting down the show. That that will happen. I will uh, scorch earth this motherfucker. But uh, email us at see no, hear no, speak no pod at gmail.com or... If you do it quick enough, you can possibly even get in a good suggestion, you bunch of lazy fucks, if you... Uh... Or pod at gmail.com. <laughs> Yes. See, Chris skipped, <laughs> Chris skipped that whole part. Yeah, uh, that'll and work, And just too. went straight to the, the next bit. That'll so, work. Wow. It's it. right. No, you didn't, because I just got it. Bam. No, I didn't. You think you're fucking slick. slick. I didn't want to slap you in the head, man. You you're the to, first. You want me to spray you with some more deet? Because I'm going to spray myself with some more deet. <laughs> hey, look, wait. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> spray me, bitch. <laughs> this is fucking shit. <laughs> you have a hoodie on. Spray me, bitch. Spray my back, at least. Because that's uh, where they're biting me. I got you, bro. Oh, there's someone in my mouth. 40% eat in my well, throat. Hey, at least we have the physician's notes on the back. <laughs> we know what to do. We've come prepared. So the, the stuff that James and I are spraying ourselves with and now getting in our mouths, apparently, oh, uh, has shit. a note to physician on the back of it. And this note says probable muscle damage may, uh, <laughs> may contradict the use of gastric lavage. I don't know what any of that yeah, means. I was about to say. None of it. Not even a single, maybe the word and. Uh, <laughs> that but, doesn't sound very straightforward, does it? No, even it doesn't. Even if you and didn't the know what, is, the word, is, what the real word meant, the definition of whatever <laughs> that word is, the rest of it doesn't sound. I'm really thinking that maybe maybe we should have done the 60% DEET, 40% other ingredients, because I'm still getting bitten by fucking mosquitoes. Oh, hey, mosquitoes. look. We also have a hotline number. That. Ask them why their shit ain't working and why mosquitoes are still buzzing my head. Anyway, Chris, <laughs> please, sir, take me out of this hellhole and put me in to your own personal hellhole, which has a woman by the name of Helen Duncan in the place because uh, cause she dead now because she old. But she also super, <laughs> super fucking witchy. Man. She's super something. She, she's super something. And the verdict is still out on this one, as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> as far as my, my mind is concerned, because, um, uh, which also, uh, you mentioned that you were setting it up, but not that you had cued it or when we were going to do it, so I hope Correct. you got it ready, uh, but... It's ready. Okay. You go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, it, as far as that, that clip goes and just some of these letters, the, the correspondence that she received and everything over the years, I mean, it, it's hard to say. It, it's really hard to say that, that all of these people were this convinced or this confused by what they saw. Yeah, uh, I mean... I, I gave a little my, my thoughts at the end of the last episode, yeah. but after listening to the episode again, my thoughts have changed. I'm gonna wait for the end of this this one. For I'm gonna wait for the final conclusion, but uh, my my mind has changed a little bit from last episode already. See, but my my uh, my thought process on this has been tainted quite a bit just because I've I've may, maybe even seen something about uh, Helen in particular, but I wouldn't know. But I've certainly seen. Uh, a, a fair amount of stuff on uh, early 20th century, uh, you know, people that did seances and shit and did exactly what she did with the quote unquote, uh, you know, uh, ectoplasm that would ooze from her, her ghost holes. And <laughs> ghost um, holes. The, the pictures that uh, you can pull up and things of this happening uh, do not, uh, they don't have the same oomph that you would hope an actual ghost coming out and being like, Thip, would, 
But then again, maybe ghosts uh, are just not very photogenic. And, uh, and them's the brakes, I suppose. Uh, I would like the DEET away from my open Red Bull, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's only 40%. It's, it is only 40% DEET, but <laughs> Red Bull is 20% DEET, so you can't be mixing. Mm. You don't want to be ingesting 60% DEET, 40% whatever else garbage is in Red Bull. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't drink um, DEET and Red Bull? No, kind of like, like like vodka and Red Bull. No, because the the bull semen gets all spoiled, Ugh. and it's just not good anymore that way. Mm. Mm. Don't mm. you wish they still used real bull semen in Red Bull? Taurine, oh. yum. Yeah, I'm imagining... people, that's what taurine is or used to be. <laughs> Wait, really? I'm imagining. <laughs> no, that's for real. Red Bull yeah. indeed would taste <laughs> metallic. I don't know why mm. I'm imagining that, but that's what comes to mind. Like that 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 mixture would probably taste metallic. I will say that some of the deet that was on my fingers got on the uh, the end of my cigarette, and it is uh, it, it's tingly. It's a little little, little tangy. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's got a little, little 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 kick to it. Yeah, it's got a little kick to it. The like, burn uh, means like it's working. <laughs> mm, man, I'll tell you what: no mosquitoes have bitten the inside of my mouth yet. <laughs> mm. There you go. There you go. Oh, Chris, proof is in the pudding. So, winter. What 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 time? What year? What beautiful vista right. of England and or Scotland are you whisking us away to, sir? Well, we are wisping away to uh, the 30s for right now, <clears throat> moving into the 40s. Uh, Man, it is just, notable... That's going to be a delicious cake. ...that the, uh, the 30s, man, had this huge explosion of spiritualism. Uh, and, you know, of course, as usual... Uh, Mr. Magistus did no trail off research, and that would have just taken way too much of my time uh, to do the, the the trail off research into why you know there was uh, a historical reason for this explosion of spiritualism in in all of these different forms that were just you know uh, it, it's still in many countries seen as evil or practiced as as witchcraft or whatever the case may be how how other cultures feel about it uh you know england can, can i can i interject my my uh, my thinking on why sure it it is because we had just gotten out of a um uh, a really tumultuous period in time where there was a lot of death and a lot of bad shit that happened you know the civil war just happened there was you know uh, shit, it fuck, this shit was fucked <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> the fuck shit and then, was fucked. And then, uh, you know, after that, they had an uh, a, a era of, of prosperity, really, where people weren't dying in the streets all day, every day. And now we have time to really ponder on the question of, you know, what happens afterwards? What happened to all our loved ones that just recently, in mass, died? And, you know, maybe we can answer those questions with uh, a crack pot or two. Or, maybe, they're not cracked pots. Maybe they are fully made in uninjured pottery. <laughs> James. I like pot. Mm. I like pot. That not was big on crack. That was... Oh, I am. Oh, but man, when you mix the two, it's called <laughs> Steve Jobs in it. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you'll not take a bath or talk to your kids. Nice, nice. Sounds like a plan, Stan. Mm. So, I mean, your your idea makes a lot of sense. It, it really does. I think I think it, it had a lot to do with the age of science bringing on, um, you know, the the thinking contrary to all of the angels and demons and such Mm -hmm. that that had dominated the world for for so many years prior to the age of science. Yeah, because that's what's really funny about this is that it's it's the angels and and demons and stuff, but looked for and and tried to be, you know, processed uh, scientifically. So it's still the the fantastical with the, the grounded and and like I like I said, trying to find an understanding, just trying to to figure out, maybe to just make you f- yourself feel better or whatever. But well, I can appreciate that, I, and I can follow yeah, the logic behind yeah, it. It was a, it's a it's a cool meeting. It's a cool meeting of of both 
uh, you know, mythology and uh, math. I think it's necessary so that we can put it to rest or explore it further as is ne- as is necessary, as is needed, I should say, once mm-hmm. once things are, are determined. But, I mean, at, at, at this point, it seems weird to me that, you know, something can go from being so taboo, and we see it all the time as generations go on, how many things have gone from just the most taboo fucking thing you could ever do or even speak of, uh, you know, mm-hmm. to Sodomy. so widely... Uh, known and loved or, or appreciated and or so even practiced mm. that it, it just but seems mm. novelty, you know, or comical mm-hmm. at, at, to a point. Giant cigars that you put in vaginas and butts. I see. Yes. yes. Very comical indeed. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Not quite as widely practiced, but, but, you know, people do it. Speak for yourself. People do it. But accepted. Accepted today like, you know, the other day I was watching uh, a sitcom on ABC, and they were like, hey, where's my, my comically large uh, vagina, uh, cigar. vagina cigar that I misplaced? And the, and the lady walked in, she's like, oh, it's in my vagina still, and she popped it out. And, and there was a laugh track. Yeah, everyone was like, ah! <laughs> we're stupid. Enter laugh track. Love it. And and the dragon, but go for it. So. Hi, Jason's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jason's mom. Boom! So, uh, yeah, no, I I mean, I just, (laughs) I just find it, I just find it interesting how, how things, I I guess, for lack of a better word, evolve over, over the generations. Mm -hmm. And the more we know, uh, you know, that it just makes things, I don't know. I I don't know. I've said it before on the show that I I really do think that one day. It's in a book. (laughs) It's witches and shit. The more you know. It's witches and shit. Uh, But yeah, no, I mean, I've said it before on the show, but I I really do think, you know, eventually science will either do away with all of the superstition slash beliefs. That you can't put a finger I, on. Yeah. I believe in Slash. You know? But maybe not. I could be wrong. We'd probably Dude. kill each other before that happens. You're, kill ourselves. You're 35 years old. Your parents haven't told you that Slash isn't real yet? No, they, Jesus t- they told Christ. me, but like, I mean... Slash or Flash? My birthday. You know what? We... <laughs> we <laughs> Uh, we were saying slash. Uh, we've we've got to stop. We've we've got to stop uh, rehashing old South Park. Uh, no, we <laughs> no, we hey, don't. No, we don't. We've had South Park jokes on our on our show. Hey, I'm not like, I'm not trying to make a South Park joke seem like it's my own. <clears throat> it's a reference. That's a uh, thing that happens. Not when you go into the whole spiel. Yeah, it is. Or the seal. Because because if people okay. listening have seen South Park, they'll they'll immediately you know, know like ha ha they're you know, doing Chris, the South Park when he's, thing. When before we started, Chris said that he's got a lot of information to get through. <laughs> it's a decent <laughs> We're amount. Still jacking off. So so Chris, please the information that needs to got to. All right, let's do it. Uh, so I'm not gonna do a recap because it, it's not necessary. Just listen to the first part, you lazy fuckers. Uh, and I, I apologize. I apologize for all of my recaps last week. <laughs> that was really just for my understanding. I wasn't. I was like, wow. When he mentions it, I've recapped quite a lot of stuff. Uh, but that was really just so I could make sure that I was uh, grasping the whole situation uh, correctly. Which all gravy. turns out I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, not exactly, but I got there. So yeah, we're good. We're good. So the one please. thing though, I will recap with some explanation though, is the uh, the uh, I'll give you a couple of definitions on the other abilities that she yeah. was displaying. Yeah, because I really did want to know what the fuck. Yeah. So uh, we'll do clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is the supernatural power of seeing objects or actions removed in space or time from natural viewing. So, okay. the quick intuitive knowledge of things and people, sometimes before they happen, sometimes while they're happening in a different place, uh, you know, not always... Uh, is, that like, is that like when you know uh, what song is going to come on the radio next? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or like a bike. when the door will, somebody will knock on the door, or, you know, mm-hmm. something like that. Or Timmy's like, in uh, trouble. Like that time in... That time in gym when I totally knew that kid was going to get pantsed at the volleyball court because I pantsed him at the volleyball court. Yep. See, that was a good. That was a good one. That was clairvoyance. Mm-hmm. Uh, clairaudience, on the other hand, 
uh, would be the power to hear sounds said to exist <clears throat> beyond the reach of ordinary experience or capacity, i.e. the voices of the dead or whatever else they may be. Okay. I got some theories, but we're not going to go into that. That's a, for a whole nother episode. Um, All right. So, yeah, basically speaking to the to the dead skis. Uh, and then there was psychometry. Psychometry is just a pretty cool word. Uh, it is the alleged art or faculty of divining facts concerning an object or a person associated with it by contact with or proximity to the object. Oh, so like here's my dead grandpa's watch. Uh, yeah. Where did he hide, hide his gold? Yeah. And then they'd be like in Christopher Walken's butt. That's exactly right. And then he would, he or she okay. would like either get a vision of that event or like a whiff of if they were lucky of the metal mm-hmm. and the butt crack and uh, you know and then they'd have to piece it all together or you know hear the watch ticking from inside you know like as if. You were listening to somebody's stomach and you hear the baby inside, but instead it's a watch taken in his butt, you know? Something like or that. Or a bomb. Or a bomb. Or, or a snook. Um, so, yeah, there'd it's be the definitions. These are pretty cool powers, though, right? Mm, football. <laughs> yes, next, please. Pretty interesting powers. They seem like they, they, they could be a pain in the ass if you have no control over them, you know? Or a watch inside of it, yeah. I mean, not everybody can be an X-Man, but... <clears throat> You know, you, you, I mean, or an ex woman, not with that attitude, or an ex woman. You know, you, you just got to make the best of uh, of what you got, the, the hand you were dealt. Um, so mm-hmm. here we are. Uh, I had mentioned uh, somewhere around nineteen forty. Uh, sorry, twenty six. Uh, she starts mm-hmm. offering seances and such. Uh, after her feeble husband builds her a cabinet with which to sit in. Now, I, uh, after doing mm-hmm. some more research, I, I realized, or I found out, this cabinet, it's it's kind of just like an open box. It, it's... Uh, it, okay. Like it, with a curtain in front of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's got a curtain in front of it. So she is hidden mm-hmm. behind the curtain, and the spirits emerge from it. The pictures you see... Uh, are Mm -hmm. from either tests that were done or I'll I'll get into it but it's it's uh, doing this research on this particular story has been weird because like I was saying before we started the show it it no one place has it all just laid out nice and neat and pretty little Uh, package so you had to to run around the internet quite a bit to to gather everything for yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and and it, and it probably for people who know this story better than I do it it's probably making me sound stupid in some places because it's difficult to piece it together and uh, so I'm mm-hmm. trying not to to use words that that make it like this is exactly how it happened and what happened because I I right, could be right, fucking right. wrong right <laughs> I mean you and you naturally sound stupid anyway uh, so. It's like it's not a stretch. You know. And as previously <laughs> stated, we're not we're not journalists. We're we're light perusers yes, of, exactly. of the internet I, and mildly interesting stories. Man, sometimes I just Google it and then I just I, I'm like, all right, I'm ready for the episode, guys. And then I me, <laughs> me doing the episode is is literally the first time I'm even learning about it too. So it's a but you know in that in that giving instance, away the creative process behind the S and H and S and Pod. In that instance, it's more of a. a an experience that we all get to, you know, we all get to take this journey together. And I think that brings us all a little closer to kissing hmm. when we meet. Feeling all fuzzy inside. So are there more uh, definitions, Chris? No, no, no more definitions. We're, we're going to jump right into the meat and taters of it now, um, where it starts to get interesting. Uh, so she starts doing these seances. They start gaining popularity. Um, and and the the setup, like I said, is 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 exactly as I explained it before. Which I saw, uh, if you watch the the documentary, which I, I, again I'll, I'll shoot out a. We've not been cheating, so we haven't we haven't watched good. it. I did queue up what you told me to to, so that we could all listen to it, and I listened to that bit. But uh, we have we, we've 
we are waiting for the story to to keep to stay objective Good. Yeah. with bated breath now in that documentary they take you to the actual house in the actual room that in uh, Portsmouth that she used to do a mm-hmm. lot of those uh, of the séances and you know you would have 30 plus people crammed into this little room her big ass cabinet mm-hmm. and her sitting off in this corner and it, it's just hard to imagine. Now, they had blackout curtains and shit like that hung up. But mm-hmm. a red light above her cabinet, I think they said. <clears throat> and and the, the people who were present would say something along the lines of they could see in the first and second rows, you could pretty much see about six feet in front of your face. So... That's a decent right. amount of vision, you know, as far as, as yeah. after a little while, your eyes start to adjust to shit like that, and uh, that that's a but, decent amount. I mean, the amount. people seven feet away are, are just fucked, and they're just, they're just imagining things at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems okay. that way. Right. So, I mean, there are definite, they're definite things to keep in mind to, that, that could, even little things that could sway your vote like that kind of thing right there. Uh so yeah, thirty people in this room. There couldn't have been more than I would say fifteen in the first and second rows. I, I mean, I would think you could probably just judging by the look of this room. You, I would think you could fit thirty people in there. So anyway, she starts doing them. They start gaining pers- uh, popularity. Um, the people are, are writing her letters back. They're they're gaining closure and solace and you know all that fun stuff that people need for dead loved ones and it the word gets out to other spiritualists who run you know groups and such so you got right because we have to imagine that she is not the only person in uh the uk doing this at that time because it like chris said there was a boom of it in the early 1900s and well late 1800s as well where you know that this was an industry at that point and it is again i was just thinking it's crazy that we used to like try and like usually execute people who claim to have these supernatural powers but now they got quote unquote psychics on tv and like psychic mm-hmm. commercials to go and call them up and well, get a psychic well, that's reading because their names are like reverend blah 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 but also, uh, I mean, at, at, at the same time, uh, most of the people way back in the day that were that were put to death for doing this uh, didn't say, hey, I can talk to dead people. Right. It was other people who Saying, were... Saying, hey, this dude can talk to dead people. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then they were like, hey, we think that you're consorting with the devil. These people had then had to, you know, uh, fight for their lives, which usually... Uh, they lost that fight and were then, hey, you know, if we're going to throw you in, in the river and if you sink, then uh, then you're cool. Uh, but if you float and pop up, that means that because uh, water's pure and, and witches ain't. So then you're a witch and we'll hang you. Yeah. So you're going to die no matter what. Uh, but, hey, if you drowned, we'll certainly feel sorry about it. <laughs> that just more confirms my point. You could you could just have someone say that you're a witch and you'd get that shit done. Yeah, exactly. You. And exactly. like I said, now you can just be like, Yeah, come get a psychic reading, come talk to your loved one. Call me at one eight hundred five 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 five. Yeah, but before you step through the doors of the church, fill out this prayer card with the reason that you're here and your mother and father's maiden name and addresses. <laughs> and your first grade teacher and the name of your second pet. Don't worry about the earpiece in the reverend's ear. He's just listening to merengue music i don't fucking know god all right sorry so um yeah in gaining popularity it starts to also gain the attention of other groups such as let me find that page that's what i've been doing this whole time y'all have been yapping (laughs) <laughs> looking for the page I'm supposed to be on. Uh, the Scottish Man, Spiritual <laughs> Society, Spiritualist Society, excuse me, who uh, in Edinburgh, who Edinburgh, uh, excuse me, I don't pronounce these. Edinburgh. Names. Edinburgh uh, invited Helen, okay. uh, they invited her to give regular seances to their members mm-hmm. who were impressed and astonished at what they witnessed. So much so that they presented her with a certificate endorsing her talent. 
Yeah. Uh, really? So, so the Scottish uh, Spiritualist like, Society you know, likes the, well, okay. This shit. They like Helen. They like they Helen. Like them some. Uh, Helen. Here's a piece of paper that says we like you, like a whole bunch. So in 1928, this dude named Henry Metcalf, who was a photographer, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> think about the time, 1928. How the fuck did this happen? Somehow this guy was sitting in a seance with a flash camera and took a picture of mm-hmm. the so-called spirit, <clears throat> ectoplasmic spirit, as it had materialized and uh right had it analyzed <laughs> or basically just developed and looked at this picture and it looked like a bed sheet a white bed sheet was coming out of her nose and, and or her mouth and uh attached to it it was floating somehow and attached to it was this paper mache mask that just looks comical at best i mean yeah uh yeah that's... I, i'm actually showing james the picture right now uh and this no, is and it's super that is yeah and, it and... looks like she got like some cotton like it looks more like cotton i guess coming out of her nose than like a bed sheet but like also back then you know you st- it still had like uh, like a five ten second exposure time for the for the camera to actually take a picture you still <laughs> right. had to sit there it wasn't like Instant. It wasn't like five minutes to sit I mean, there, but it was it's, still. It's flash. It, back then, flash photography. I mean, they had that part pretty much worked out uh, as far as in the early twenties. Well, yeah, because I mean, the flash doesn't stay on. It's still just up and then gone. So I mean, it's got to expose somewhere in there. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm going through a lot of the uh, the pictures of uh, her doing things here uh, on on the computer with James, and uh, I mean, these are these are the things that make me say. Um, this is this is this is bullshit because it does look oh, well, like also the fact that supernatural powers just straight up don't exist i mean unless you're an x man or a woman but uh <laughs> i mean the fact that uh, these things do straight up just look fucking paper mache yeah they look like props they, they, for a, a middle school play yeah like poorly made props. like that classic like by, there was just marionette face yeah creepy fucking scott's mom made them and scott's mom is already like not the smartest lady ever she's nice but, uh, I mean, maybe next time we ask, uh, you know, uh, Enrique's mom, because she has uh, that degree in, in art, uh, and, you know, Scott's mom it was hit by that bus that one time, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the pictures all look pretty open and shut. Um, <clears throat> it's the witnesses that make it a little difficult for me. Uh so, right, so so this Metcalf guy gets these pictures and, and they think it's just an open and shut case. So that that sparks more suspicion and, and more of a buzz around these other types of communities. So uh, right. right around 1931, you get the London Spiritualist Alliance that sees the pictures and they determine basically the same thing somebody sat in and they watched or whatever they they tried to get a a swipe of it uh they tried to 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 grab at it and didn't get anything but still somehow determined that it was cheesecloth paper mache and uh egg whites somehow egg whites were involved um and i didn't i mean you mm. whip those enough and they get nice and fluffy Uh, Yeah, probably. Um, And I mentioned in the last episode that she had two spiritual guides, one of them being the Mm -hmm. older guide, Mr. Albert or Dr. Albert or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, Mm -hmm. The other one I didn't get to because we we trailed off on something else. No, we did. Uh, It was like uh, like Colonel Will or something like that, right? No, no, no. it's, It's a little girl named Peggy. Oh. It's a little girl named Peggy. Uh, So... Peggy Sue. Yeah. Um, so right around the same time, this 1931 time frame, uh, there was a police woman who, being suspicious, snuck in to a seance. Uh, not in uniform, I guess, is the only way to sneak in. You fucking, it's a pretty small <laughs> room. 
Uh, so she's rappelling down from the fucking ceiling. Paid her little British pounds or whatever the fuck this symbol is, and uh, and got in. <laughs> <laughs> Was able to swipe her little British when 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 the when the ectoplasm whatever came out. She was able to grab some. And when she got it back into the light, it turned out to be a pair of white underwear. Ha! <laughs> Ten pounds. Dirty, I hope. So she turned her in, and she was fined. Ten pounds for fraud. No big deal. And or she was fined. Ten shillings. So they or... gave her ten pounds for being fined. Whatever it was. Uh, that's probably, like, equivalent to, like, 200, 300 pounds or whatever. So, like, fine. I mean, that's a pretty heavy fine, because 200 pounds is heavy. I don't know. Do you know? Hey, what... don't call me fat. <laughs> hey. Uh, so, hmm. by this time, now her fucking frail husband was basically her manager, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. after she was arrested that one time, and it, it hit the paper. It wasn't, you know, headlines or anything, but it did hit the paper. Uh, enters calls the attention of this man who is a pretty interesting character uh, his name is Harry Price now Harry Price was uh, he was a British, British psychic researcher and author who pretty much gained his fame by being the guy who would go and investigate these claims and either disprove or give his seal of approval, which there were a few cases he did give a seal of approval. There were some cases he could not disprove. Um, so he... No, I, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't listening as closely as I could have been. Was he invited to to do this by uh, Helen and her husband, or was he sent to do this by someone else? Uh, a little bit of both. He wasn't sent as, as okay. in he worked for somebody who sent him... Uh, but he, he mm-hmm. was kind of doing it of his own amusement and is because it, it was Delicious. just kind of like his thing. Um, right, but yeah, right. he was, he was invited by Henry to, uh, come and sit in. Okay. So, so he wasn't, he wasn't going in in a fake mustache and big, uh, goofy glasses or anything like he, they knew what he was there to do and it, it was welcome. Right. And, and now, now think about the timeline now. He was invited after they had already gotten a couple of seals of approval from other, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a few right. other but endorsements. But also after, but also after she had been arrested for fraud. That is true. By the undercover cop lady. That is true. They were feeling so, pretty confident, though, still. Which worries me that that he was invited by them and is, uh, in their pocket. Uh, for lack of a better phrase, and will maybe say, "Oh, I don't know about this, but this totally," you know, yeah. just to kind of lend credence to it. But that's maybe just the cynic in me as well. Like this guy, I don't want to shit on his legacy because he sounds like he was an all right guy. So, uh, and also his name, Harry Price. That's what I'm going to call like a sticky situation. From there you go. Like man, man. There was a Harry Price to pay. <laughs> well, this guy was he he was an interesting character. He uh he grew up loving like stage magic and sleight of hand type of magic. He oh, actually became So he more than most people would be able to identify something like some weird trickery going on. Exactly. He and and he really enjoyed this stuff and he got good at it himself, which also gave mm-hmm. him the idea to pursue trying to figure out what was really going on with supernatural magic if there was anything there. just like the amazing randy actually i was do- i was sure. just trying to work that in yeah, just, was... just like just like james randy yeah. which uh there's a, a awesome guy a really awesome fucking uh documentary on him that everyone should go go watch called an unreasonable man uh just check it out uh he uh, uh magician stage magician uh did a lot of houdini type stuff hmm. But spent the the last uh, years of his life uh, specifically debunking people who defraud people uh, out of their money by saying, "Oh, I can bend spoons and shit. Oh, I can totally also find uh, rare metals and stuff for you to to do your mines and stuff from from the, from helicopters." Cool. And you, but you pay me like hundreds of millions of dollars to do it. 
Um, and James Randi spent a good portion of his life trying to, to cut that shit out. I actually learned a few cool little <clears throat> shitty tricks from James Randi. To, Indeed. you know, just like small little things like how to like like pretend like you're moving a pencil mm-hmm. with yeah. your mind by yeah, like sure having so. it barely teetering on an edge and like slightly blowing on mm-hmm. it to move it. Yeah. Shit like that. Cool shit. James yeah. Randi's really cool. I agree with Jason. Look him up. But, but yeah, so it, it, that that totally reminds me uh, of him. Uh, but as well as uh, Neil Patrick Harris because he's totally a sleight of hand magician and you wouldn't even know it. Is he really? And also he's very cute and gay. Yes. Yeah. You know, no. Patrick Harris is all the good things in this world. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Patrick Harris, if you're listening to this, I love you. Yes. Neil, but no homo, though. Neil, uh, very much homo. <laughs> I totally dug you in Doogie Hauser. We hired you, so, Doogie. Just throwing it out, Dukes. Okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that was this guy. He was very well known, very well respected. And uh, in 1931, he worked for the National Laboratory of Physical Research, where he took on its most illustrious case. Uh, he paid Helen Duncan. Uh, now, th- this is going to be a weird bounce back and forth between articles. They all pretty much say the same thing, but there are different differences to them okay so this is harry Uh price's actual page and his portion of that story but uh i'm gonna bounce back and tell some other angles of it too so anyway uh just so you get the whole thing so yeah he paid 50 pounds or whatever that symbol is uh to helen duncan so that she could be examined under scientific conditions he was skeptical uh, and had her perform a number of test seances. Now, this is the weird thing. They don't say anything about what happened at said test seances. Mm-hmm. But he, he suspected her of swallowing a cheesecloth and regurgitating it. Right. Right, which we mentioned before. Uh, he right. had proven through the analysis of a sample of ectoplasm produced by Duncan that it was made of cheesecloth somehow. Um, and I, man, what if cheesecloth is just dead ghosts that we that we <gasps> caught and we're cutting up and we're wrapping our cheese in it? Wrapping oh, Happy October, everybody! Oh, Things just got spooky. That that's right. You know, that's so gross, though, to think about fucking puking up a cheesecloth. Like, cheesecloth it, by itself is like, uh, like, because that's like gauze type, yeah. a feel to it, and I, I just imagine like if you go to swallow that it's just absorbing all of the moisture oh, just in, and just, mouth. just oh it's <laughs> so bad it's so bad it's so bad yeah it sounds awful so he was uh <laughs> mr price was also uh, a media personality uh who had also written several best-selling books on the supernatural and he was the director apparently of the national laboratory of physical research the president of which was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle himself. Um, wow. Okay. Conan. I like him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah. So so the, the author of uh, of uh, what's it? Uh, yeah. God damn it! The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Of course. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Doctor Asland, I presume. Yes. Uh, yeah. Of course, Sherlock Holmes. So. Right. Sorry, he he was also uh, he he was also a pretty badass guy in his own right. Uh, he was you know uh, secret uh, you know police not not secret police, but he was like F, like a CIA type guy, but uh, you know a spy during the uh, the war and things in England. He was he was a pretty badass guy. But yes, please, sorry, continue. <laughs> so, yeah, this is this was a pretty illustrious club going on here. So Mr. Price comes in and. Uh, and and he tries to set up this whole this whole scientific method to to examine her her shit right. So he gets mm-hmm. he has a, a gynecologist come in, do a full mm-hmm. body cavity search no. beforehand. Wait, do I, should I be should I be starting the the sexy background music now? <laughs> if you got some queued up, go for it. <laughs> 
James, your sexy background music is is real, not sexy. Well, you're not sexy. I'll be. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> what a good break. <laughs> so he he has her examined. Uh, nothing was found on her person. Uh, then he has her sewn into a black gown. Now it's closed. Holy. So she can't pull anything out of it. Oh, okay. 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 That, for a second, yeah, I was like, like they sewed, sewed onto her. Yeah, like sewed it into her skin and shit. But uh, that is that'd be a little too hardcore. But I, I get what you're saying. They like they like uh, sacked her yeah. to where she couldn't fucking do anything. Ooh, that's hot. Uh, under it or to come to have it come out of it. Boogie boogie style. Yeah, it is hot. Yes. Yes. I want to sack yeah. Hound, Hound Dog. Yeah, and they fi- they filled it with nightclub. <laughs> mm. So. So, right, so so they did all this. They got her posted up in her cabinet, doing her thing. Right, now, this guy was, he was, he was skeptical. He, he wanted to, he, he wasn't, supposedly he wasn't set out to disprove anyone. He was just set out to get to okay. the bottom of it. Which is why. So if it if it were real, he wanted to know how and such. Uh, but if not, he wasn't there to like. He wasn't there to rain on the parade. He was just there out of uh, scientific curiosity for. Right him. now, now the ones it says that that he that he didn't disprove. He wasn't able to disprove. It wasn't that he went into how or anything. You know mm-hmm. because right you can't really right, explain right, right. supernatural powers so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but it's just that that he did make mention or write in his books or whatever that he could not disprove these, so he mm-hmm. wasn't set out to do so. That oh. that was his thing. Uh, now, if you read the Helen Duncan website written by her granddaughter, whoever, um, they they're pretty they're pretty adamant that he was set out to disprove and that that he had this guilty of fraud until proven genuine. Um, demeanor about him did this way about him that like that was his thing so um well i mean as as i i think uh, just in my humble opinion uh scientific research should kind of go is sure. that i mean you shouldn't go you shouldn't go in with a bias you should go, you should go in thinking uh that this needs to be proven not i need to see if it's real or not just I need to see if this is real. Period. Right. Not just oh, this bitch is fake, and I'm a, I'm gonna tell you how. That's right. Objectively, Fucking right. Bitches, it bitches. Which has killed my dog's grandpa. Witches ain't shit, but hoes no, and tricks. Mm-mm, Witch, no, no, we you're using a lot of words that we don't use on this show, James. <laughs> we don't objectify women. We don't put women down. We don't belittle women. Women are not only up on a pedestal, so we can see up their skirts, of course, but. Whoa! They, That's right. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> hey. man. Hey. Man, weird. Moving on. Bad people and men and women. Upstairs. Uh, X Men and women. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, the Harry Price website says he was able to take a sample of the ectoplasm and prove that it was cheesecloth. The Helen Duncan website says that he was able to take a sample of the ectoplasm and it dissipated in the bottle. Uh, oh, okay. So there, there's there's differing reports on the 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 ectoplasm uh, gate, right? Yeah, uh, that's two. That is two very very different outcomes yeah. to to grabbing some of that ectoplasm. Is uh, some of it was cheesecloth, and some of it, uh, you know what? It disappeared when he put it in the bottle. And I will say <gasps> that I I'm this is quite the emotional upskirt to me, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's a little weird. Because it, it, a it was definitely published that he concluded it was all trickery and fraud. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it, it was it was it was his conclusion that she regurgitated cheesecloth uh, covered in egg whites. So I guess so that it slid up more easily or some shit. And, ah, and then see, see you you saturate it with something else so it doesn't steal your fucking vital essence and, and moisture. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, oh, that just sounds awful, though. 
I I like my natural moisture the way it is. James is soaking wet right now, Chris. It's disgusting. <laughs> Only for you, baby. Mm. We gotta try something else other than holding hands or touching each other at all or looking each other in the eye. I think that um, that Chris should continue. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, she stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, deet eye. Shit. Oh shit. Oh, forty percent deet in your eye. I, I, I don't have a non deeted surface to rub my eye with. No, I'm I good. got you chemical I'm shower. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. I actually really did freak out there for a second. <clears throat> you guys are awful. You should never deet. So it's forty percent deet. <clears throat> I didn't. I've just been touching myself, trying to kill the stupid mosquitoes that are hovering around me. Yeah. You know what? Could just be ghosts. Could be. <gasps> Could or cheesecloth. Mm-hmm. Could be. So, uh, so. Where, where, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, the dude was all like, cheesecloth. They were all like, nope. Alright, so... She's got a dude... And his wife... And another lady who... And, and I thought somewhere I read that the two ladies were her sisters. I could be wrong. I, I, I apologize if... Whatever. <clears throat> I mean, that, that is what you said last episode. And I don't think it's it's that bad a thing. She had, what, had seven siblings or whatever? Yeah, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think it is wrong. I so, think they were her sisters and the dude was a brother-in-law. And, yeah, just some random... Random dude. Oh, okay, so, so they all yes. helped. I, set I was about up. to ask one of one of the two sisters' husbands, or but it would kind of be weird if like third sister that was like, I'm not gonna join this shit, but her husband was like, fuck that, I will. <laughs> so I'm guessing it was one of the two helper sisters' husbands. Yes, I assume it was, um, because okay. they both had the same last name, so I assume it was his. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so they were helpers. Um, so I guess if you got three other people somehow sneaking around this crowded room of 30 plus, you could make all of this happen. But so imagine this woman, yeah. this woman sitting there blindfolded, sewn into a black dress, puking up a bed sheet sized piece of cheesecloth. And then somehow it snakes its way across the floor and, and, you, somebody or something sticks a mask on it and, and it just starts floating and doing whatever in front of said person as she or as it talks she's not, they see none of the witnesses say she was talking they say it's talking right. to them right, making comments um, as, as only this person would know and such. Hey. Oh, there's Oh, ooh, wow. It was only yeah, a matter no, of time. That dude is in a oh. rush. Wait, is that a chase? Or is that... I mean, something fucked up is happening. That dude was going way fast. Yeah, that guy was on the street over gunning it. You could hear the air rushing past his car. Oh, Good shit. lord. Uh, <clears throat> but back back to the situation at hand. I'm gonna I'm gonna change my, my vote, and I'm gonna say that there was a gas leak in her basement. <laughs> Full of deet. I mean, that's right. Full of deet. <laughs> the air was forty percent deet down there. They had a mosquito problem. Plus sixty percent of that's other right. ingredients. It's fucked the up. The air down there mostly arsenic. Mostly. It's fucked up. Sixty percent. So yeah. Okay. Um, also, it doesn't. Wow. Fucking fifty-two minutes. It does not look like we're gonna get through this a, third, a second time. Uh, hey man, I like three parters, and you know. I mean, it, yeah, three it definitely, times the charm, baby. It definitely gives you some some time off. Um, so whatever, <laughs> indeed, and what you need, you yeah. deserve it. That's cool. Continue. Yeah, yeah whatever, whatever. Yeah, it turns I mean, into I'm, is fine with me. I'm working on, I'm working on other stuff too uh, for for the Halloween season. We still got so, a couple, so more don't weeks. feel bad for me. We're we're good. Like me and Jason's mm-hmm. upcoming album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're dropping it uh, the same week Kanye's dropping his because I've changed. Oh, so changed, we're never dropping I, it then. I have because <laughs> Kanye keeps canceling albums. No, no I have, I've changed James's mind. <laughs> he is now 
an enemy of Kanye. I am not Kanye. If you're listening to this, I listening. love you. <laughs> Kanye doesn't own a phone or a record player, which is the only two ways you can listen to us. Kanye, if you're listening to this, come find me. We'll see what's up. That's no, right. come find me, and we'll 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 have some fun having out of the town. And there it is. I mean, just write I got me a check, James, dude. I just want to check. James, that is not part of our series repertoire. We do not mm-hmm. invite celebrities to come hang no. out. We invite celebrities to come. Yes, ask Kanye, please come hang out yeah, with me. Yeah, that's right. We we invite celebrities for some of this. <laughs> some of that's this. Right. Some of this fist poundage. That's that's right. Fisting. That's right. <laughs> we invite the boy. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. No. No. Damn, that was close. It flew out of my hand. It's super I got rubber sweet. gloves that I'm go keeping, all the way I'm up to my JJ elbows. Fat. Ew. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was so close to asking why, but I have no fucking need to know why. For Kanye, All I know of is that I'm keeping... <laughs> I'm I'm keeping score of how many uh, mosquitoes I have snatched out of the air and killed, and how many James has, which is zero it's, for it's, me so it's, far. It's two to nothing awesome. so far. Awesome, uh, but I'll, I mean, I'll, but James is, is getting close. Yeah, I'm excited to hear the tally at the one. end of the show. You got uh, a little over well, thirty minutes to. I got to step up my game now. Yeah, you do. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> you know what, Chris, you are a ta- a tally ho. Tally ho. Oh. So here we go. Um, yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he just tried to elbow it. Let me find my. <laughs> no, no, I swatted at again. it. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 you're good, you're good. I hit I'm the just... mosquito with an RKO. <laughs> 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 hey, they can come out of nowhere. That mosquito didn't see it coming. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Fucking a. Uh, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you got me on that one, dude. <laughs> the th- I'm just listening. I'm just hearing the commentator in my head. The three most oh devastating. Oh god, that letters. mosquito's been cut in half. <laughs> Man, I've just, I've just been slipping date rape drug into their drinks. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, right when James is taking a sip of his water, <laughs> glazing right on over that, boys and girls, <laughs> moving sweet right along here. Um, yeah, man. So, okay, Back so to witches. so it was Mr. Price apparently who sent this lady in to swipe up a sample after his sample dissipated in the bottle. Um, and she was able mm. to get the sample that turned into cheesecloth. Um, <clears throat> that, wait, is that the cop lady or uh, uh, unrelated? Yeah, 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 cop lady. Okay, so so he he was in on the whole uh, finding out what the fuck before she was arrested for fraud. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, apologies. <clears throat> this is part of the no, okay. uh, bouncing around, you know. Right, right. I mean, do we know how? Do we know uh, about how old uh, she was when the you know the arrest and shit happened this first time? Uh, yeah, this first time was 1931. She was born in 80 something. West Philadelphia. Uh, blah 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 blah. No. That's what she was born November twenty fifth, eighteen ninety seven. So she was thirty three. Eighteen ninety seven. Okay, thirty three. Okay, still, still. Uh, 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 what did what did they call her? Sprightly young uh, woman. Uh, uh, no, it. Fuck. What was it, Chris? What did they call her that I said was like she was like pleasantly plump but still easy on the eyes? <laughs> oh shit! Oh, what the fuck did we say? <laughs> I don't remember at all, but I know it was. It's okay. Great. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, she was good. She was good. <laughs> All right. So, um... Yeah. A Bonnie Lass. Bonnie yes. Lass. That's what she it was. was. That's Bonnie. what they called it. Bonnie Lass still. Yes. So, yeah. It, Tree it was in It was in 34 that uh, Harry Price's friend, Miss Maul, um, grabbed at Peggy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so, so it was It was like her, her good bud ghost Peggy that... Uh, was actually had some cheesecloth taken out of her. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, when they <laughs> when they arrived back, uh, Harry Price and and Miss Mall here, Miss what the fuck was her name? 
Miss Mall. The, that, Officer Mall. Yeah, please. Officer <laughs> Mall. That's fine. Uh, a mall cop. She if claimed you will. that the spirit was an undervest. I get nothing for mall cop. I get nothing for mall cop. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt Chris with a Paul Blart Man, expose. That was. <laughs> glaze it. Man, I fucking thought that shit was funny, but go for it, Chris. All right. Whatever. All right, Mr. Don't you Blart. pat me on the back. <laughs> continue. All right. Uh, so he was gonna tell me to continue. I'm, I'm going to continue. You, well, it's been so long, you know. It's been so long. Um, That's what she said. Helen claimed Not to me. that the garment that that Miss uh, Officer Mall found was uh, had mm-hmm. been taken from her traveling bag and was simply. Uh, an attempt to discredit her. She was offered the chance to bring charges against Miss Mall, okay. but refused. So it was Miss Mall, Officer Mall, who caused such a commotion that the cops were called, and that's when she was arrested for fraud and such. Um, <clears throat> at mm-hmm. the court, she was accused of both affray and fraud. Uh, she pled not guilty. Although eight people were present at the seance, only three appre- uh, bleh, appeared for the prosecution. Um, what, what is, uh, <laughs> she, she was, uh, charged with a fray? A fray. And, yeah, what's, what's a what, fray? Yeah, what's that? Good question. Let's look it up. Uh, no, that's okay. No, don't worry about it. I just, I just like when you tell me that I asked a good question. I don't need to know the answer. Too late. It's a public fight. A noisy quarrel. A brawl. Ooh. Oh, so see, those are those are two very different things: a fight and a brawl, and a noisy quarrel. Well, anything so that causes public commotion. Okay, so uh, but were fisticuffs had or not? No, no, they eating up them ghosts. Nothing makes mention of any fisticuffs. It was it was just a public commotion that that had that okay. had called the cops. She she did make a grab. She supposedly got something, and I don't know. It doesn't give any more description than that. Um, I assume no, no scraps, no blows were thrown. Uh, so, yeah, that's what she was charged for, or that's what she was accused of. Um, it says, even Officer Maul admitted that at the same time as the spirit guide Albert was talking, Helen could also be heard breathing deeply whilst in her trance. Nobody disputed, several spirits appeared and spoke, and when Officer Maul created the disturbance... Helen was seen to be sat behind the cabinet before she was woken out of her trance. Oh, huh. mm, uh, nah, nah, that's not too interesting. That she just had a dude hidden behind a curtain or some shit. Yeah, like that's that's not special. I mean, but to me. it, the, we could throw out easy things that we can say. Oh, that's that could be done like this, and that doesn't mean that it was done like that, and it doesn't mean that uh, even the people who were there to discredit it thought that way or thought that thing but there are there's hundreds of millions of ways this could have been faked okay but that's definitely the way that was faked. right and and only a few where it could possibly in the the furthest stretch of the imagination be genuine uh and but you know that's what uh that's what harry price was there for was to <clears throat> to see the 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 genuosity of the the whole the whole thing, and it doesn't sound like it's it's working out well on on Helen's side of that. They should not have let this dude come in. They were too cocky. Right, right. They were That's too cocky. <laughs> uh, now enter Doctor Marguerite Link Hutchinson, MB, CHB, Man. DHP, <clears throat> and other PCP stuff. Yeah, and uh, so sh- ASS. <laughs> So she was the one who examined Nikki Helen before the seance and supervised her mm. as she dressed and sewed her into her dress and all that fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. She was shown the vest, the deceased undervest, and asked if Helen could have used it to replicate the young spirit guide Peggy. Her reply was, quote, it would have been impossible to produce anything like what was seen using a garment like that, end quote. Price's regurg- mm-hmm. It says Price's regurgitation theory was also put to and dismissed by the doctor who said Helen could not have regurgitated the amount of material 
that would have been required to produce the spirits that had materialized, which is also something the, uh, the uh, documentary goes into. How the fuck did she... All of this? Well, I really, mean, all of that? Uh, it's a lot. And so, t- until we until we can break open that cabinet and see what kind of hidden compartments or fucking whatever, because unless it was just uh, uh, two sticks holding up a curtain, there's so much, yeah, so, it, so, wait, so 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 much. Actually, that I do have a go question. On um, inside this this cabinet and behind uh, anything, there could be a guy with the whole cheesecloth dummy with the paper mache face on a stick that just fucking pops it up out of fucking nowhere because there's just a red light that you can only see six feet in front of your face with and then what i i mean i suppose there could be I suppose there could be so she also said that she had been present from the time helen had a meal until the time of the seance so it would have been impossible to regurgitate material without also vomiting up the meal of which there was no trace oh Unless she was a cow in disguise and had four stomachs and could regurgitate out of each <laughs> on demand. Well, I don't think that's the case. I do have a question, <laughs> though. I do have a question. Sure. So, so they're in this room. Is she in the open the whole time? No. Or does, like, she ever get, like, obscured by, like, a curtain? Yeah, yeah that's what the cabinet is for. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's okay. behind the curtain. She's which in there is covering the I'm not going to tell you how she... they faked it then. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hold my tongue, I guess. Well, James Randi, you guys. Now, nobody else <laughs> Nobody else is behind that curtain, though. All of her helpers, her husband, everybody as far, else is as far as we in know, the room. We just know the people that were publicly in the room. Right. Well, when you see this room, I, I mean... If they had anything in it, it wouldn't it wouldn't have hidden three people. It wouldn't have hidden even two people. Whatever the fuck it was, I mean, however they were doing it, if it was people uh, uh, manipulating this stuff, it, they were damn good. Because I don't know where the fuck they would have hidden. Um, so That's what she said. But yes. now remember, this is this is this is trial number one. This is the first time she was arrested for this. She was charged and right. released for right. this one. But there were people who showed up, and that, that's what we're talking about now. So enter Mr. Ernest W. Oten, who uh, appeared for the defense. Right. He was the president right. mm-hmm. of the International Spiritualist Federation and the editor of the mm-hmm. leading spiritualist journal called Two Worlds. In his evidence... Huh. The, what? The International Spirit Federation sounds like the lamest wrestling uh out yeah it does <laughs> yeah sounds like a branch of scientology <laughs> it sounds like a wrestling branch of scientology <laughs> yeah. a wrestling Engaged. branch of scientology those are crazy fuckers right there <laughs> man we need to do a scientology episode for no we already. don't yes we do oh god i mean you can do whatever the fuck you want and uh listen I'll... you told me a list of groups i could not mention on this show and, and scientology, scientology was not was one, not one I, yeah i agree i agree I'll, yeah i'm not <laughs> so, afraid yeah, of that I mean, go for, you know it's what? just a lot of research i don't <laughs> want to fucking uh, do yeah yeah <laughs> just watch the south park episode. That's that yeah, comes down yeah. To. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. Park. uh chris j- just uh, making sure that you don't forget about uh the the interview <clears throat> that i have uh queued up and everything yeah because uh it sounds like it could go, uh, you know, somewhere near where we are. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know if you had a specific place in mind. No, well, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll throw it in in just a minute. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, it's it's just a minute. We're going to, I'm, I'm going to just give a couple more of these accounts Three. real fast. Bam. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, yeah, so Mr. Oten says um, that he attended 18, se- 18 seances given by Helen. And, quote, I arranged most of the sittings and laid down conditions which made fraud utterly impossible without detection. The spirits were intelligences Mm. separate and distant from Mrs. Duncan and were decidedly different in form, end quote. It's getting, it is getting a little creepy. Uh, Like, I don't mind saying that because uh, these sound, uh, well, this guy Honestly, the, the just the names of his groups, uh, I feel like he's predisposed to believing and wanting to believe. Fair enough. So that he would that he would go through whatever he needed to to say that oh it, it couldn't have been faked in the conditions that I set, but you 
are specifically there because you want this to be true. Yeah, this is very right. biased. Uh, yeah, well, so I mean, I so you're biased. I don't know. For sure. I mean, but I, that doesn't mean that he's wrong, and it doesn't mean that he he didn't like set up the perfect uh, conditions for you know for fraud to be detected. It, none of this uh, can be known to us really because it happened so long ago, and we can't talk to the people, and we only know the information that we have. But it it gives it it gives it a lot more. Uh, it makes it more material to me to know that someone that uh, you know ha- has some weight behind them in this field says there's no way that it could have been faked the way that we set shit up and the way that we had things prepared and what happened has to be real. Right now, perfect setting for set up for what you just said um, into that that clip that we have because <clears throat> there you go we have a real person that we're not just reading quotes from here's a real person mm-hmm. she's not a scientist she's not a doctor or anything of the sort but she was alive and present at a seance to give her actual now i don't know exactly where you queued it up but in the very beginning she does mention that she mm-hmm. was 23 yeah um I have all oh, okay. that. Yeah, cool. I have all that. So, Go for it. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play the clip, and uh, for everybody listening, uh, hopefully, I took the time to actually uh, put the actual audio from the clip in, and not just what my microphone's gonna pick up. So <laughs> let's sync it up real quick. Here we go. Three, two, one, Bing. go. You are the only person that we've been able to find who ever went to a Helen Duncan seance. Well. She did quite a number of sittings, but of course, you see, I was young comparatively for people that usually went. Um, I was 23. And Helen Duncan was already there when you arrived? She was brought into the room, having been physically examined. They even do an internal examination sometimes because a lot can be secreted within the body. And then she was brought in having been, I think, sewn into a very loose fitting and yet completely closed black robe and it was a red light which when you get accustomed to it you can see the features and expressions of somebody sitting five six feet across the room from you at certain stages curtains were drawn across which of course does let tend to give people the idea there's a lot of hanky panky going on there was a quite distinguishable smell with ectoplasm. Quite it's distinguishable. Like what? It's rather like bodily semen, that sort of uh, smell. Not, not unpleasant, but not um, one that one would expect to have around the room, but very strong. And <laughs> then this ectoplasm, as I say, snaked across the floor and came up really between us. There appeared the face of a man, short hair, and Suddenly, one of these blobs, as it were, being almost thrown on, formed a fairly large moustache. I said, oh, moustache. It was a silly thing, but you know. You knew who it was? I knew, yes, from me, immediately recognisable, as I would recognise you. He was very cross with me, if were only commenting about the moustache, and chided me as if... You know, if that's all you've got to say, you're very military. Did he look dead? Well, I suppose if you thought of it, yes. But, well, his face was animated and speaking. After two or three little interchanges, nothing of great import, I'm bound to say, he disintegrated, collapsed at our feet, and withdrawn into the medium right across the floor. It does sound in many ways quite implausible, doesn't it? It does indeed, I quite agree. I'd sympathise with anybody who disbelieved me and think they had a stronger case in a way. It's only when you've had personal experience you have to reconsider and realise that such okay, so odd things what can I take happen. away from this lady's uh, testimony here, basically... Is that she doesn't find the smell of semen unpleasant. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, and I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, it makes me feel better uh, and less, uh, less you know... Uh, Sometimes you feel a little self-conscious. Yeah, I'm you like, know? ooh, does my, oh, does my semen smell a little bad? Yeah, cause, uh, and I'm not going to smell it, because you bring it that close to your nose, there's a chance it'll touch you. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second, though, is that she knows what she's saying sounds crazy. Yeah. 
and she doesn't sound senile. Like she yeah. sounds very like of you know of, of sound mind. When you yeah, see that's her, when she Chris said, looks very very much yeah. into it. She is. I mean, yeah, very yeah, she normal. She looks like a healthy yeah, old lady. Yeah. She doesn't have a bunch of like weird goth shit in her house or nothing. Like she just looks like somebody's grandma that happened voice. to see something cool when she was twenty three. Wonderful accent. And does, makes me want it, cookies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does uh, uh, admit, though, or at least like point out that um, there are several times where the curtains uh, in front of her close and like conceal her. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and, and like, but, uh, she does also admit that, yeah, no, I can see why that would be a little, yeah, the, like a red flag for some people. I mean, also though, as far as 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 she's saying, these, these ghosts came out, and she's saying that there there was nothing really of any importance that they spoke of. They just talked and one of them got mad because she said hey cool mustache buddy and he was like blah, 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 blah. my eyes are up here lady and my <laughs> penis is down there but it would be if it hadn't been wrapped around some cheese um cheese. but <laughs> she uh i mean like when chris asked me earlier uh to listen or watch that that little clip there uh that is all that i watched and he asked me if we should play it on the show and i said yes uh, for two reasons, like uh, chiefly among them being the fact that we get to see that she has her fucking wits about her. She's not mm-hmm. some crazy lady that is misremembering something. This is something that was uh, of great importance within her life, and maybe it didn't shape her life, but she knows what she saw, and she believes mm-hmm. it, and she'll tell you about it. And second is that uh, I think it's hilarious that she says that it, it smelled like semen in there and that it wasn't at all uh, <laughs> unpleasant. So um, I was like, yes, we have to have this on the show. And, and Chris uh, simply uh, retorted, LOL, semen. Um, and I was going to wait until enough. later to point this out. I was going to wait until later. But um, so there's only like like two or three people that are that were alive to be able to give these types of testimonies during the information age, like where we could actually concretely have a video of them right yeah like only like a like a handful right her, her granddaughter lady, is alive during her seances <clears throat> and, yeah and that might be more of like a family honor type yeah, thing but like, she know, was like, yeah, she was their, there their ancestors at one of her seances though. yeah but yeah but no but yeah. here's the thing here's what i'm trying to say mm-hmm. listen listen this so like if there's only a handful of people alive right now and they all happen to believe that what they saw was true there were like thir- like you said, like thirty people at each one of her seances. Like there, she probably like performed in front of hundreds of people. I don't think it's that mm-hmm. like there were hundreds far of, of seances a, of a stretch over the years that, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not that long of a stretch that the few handful of people that are still alive mm-hmm. really believe that. Like yeah, you know, you know, like it is a coincidence if this is fate that they all believe that, but like. It's not that far of a stretch when she performed in front of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds right. of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I also genuinely actually would love to know what the admission price was um, to get in here. Like I want to know what Helen was making on these people coming because that gives incentive for her to make sure that something happens. Yeah, it, it uh, says too. So it was yeah. like I want to say it was like ten. It was ten shillings or. Ten lire, whatever. Okay, that's so all she was like fine. A ten was ten. Ten, ten pence or pence, whatever. Yeah, some shit. Ten like fucking European symbols. Maybe it was thirty. That's stupid goddamn Europe. I don't know, but that—that's definitely what she was Fuck fine. You, that French was Canada. Ten lire. Whoa, they're a brothers from the north. Yeah, I know where French Canada is, and fuck them. Hey. And also, fuck you, French Canada. That's right. There. That's right, James. I said it, and I meant it too. James over See, there, James acting like he's being never on heard. the show. Old does does not listen to the show and never has. He's, <laughs> what do you mean? He's not a fan. You would know that we hate the French Canadian. We hate the French Canadian. <laughs> Why? Because they're French Canadian. We, okay. Okay. No, I see. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> we have we have made many a comment and stand well behind it. Come find me, mm-hmm. Monk. You're cool though. Let's. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, we, we, we give her the, the G pass. She gets the pass. <laughs> <coughs> so. Oh, G. All excuse right, my, so. my coughing there. <clears throat> no, no excuse. Go. So, she was was uh, sentenced to pay a 10-shilling fine. Um, 
her <laughs> her supporters later claimed that the verdict on the fraud charge was the Scottish verdict of not proven, and that the conviction was for the <laughs> affray offense <laughs> alone. Nope. So, but, I like not proven. Well, That's so much better than not guilty. Yeah, well, the thing is, too, especially still with... still leave some ambiguity Yeah, and, well, it, with know? this kind of case, <laughs> with this kind of case, and, and one of the things is that, that her next arrest will really go into mm-hmm. is that they're not set out to prove whether or not she's right or wrong, whether or not... Okay, mm-hmm. no... They're not set out to prove whether or not what she's doing actually exists. It's whether or not what okay. she's doing is is true. So they don't care if spirits exist. They don't care if it's oh. possible if you're able to talk to them. They care if mm-hmm. you are really doing that and taking people's money for it. Because if you are... If you're really okay. doing it and taking people's money, then cool, they spent their money on some cool shit. If you're faking it, mm-hmm. no. then cool. But Then you're a charlatan and you are... Nice. Right. James just caught up to Dude. me. You know what? No, I'm at no, like six now. No, you're, you're like at, three. You're at four. I'm trying to do a show here, James. This isn't. Listen, I'm, this I'm is a, ninja mosquito killing hour. Oh my god, dude! They're swarming. <laughs> they're they're, they're, they're all. We killed too many of their comrades. There are, yeah, there are quite a lot out for blood That's now. That's because when you two girls okay. get together, your pheromones and your blood, your hot bloods, be Man. be bouncing off each other and shit. It just calls the swarm. <laughs> That's the only reason I haven't killed yeah. way more mosquitoes than you is because I don't want to beat the shit out of there's you killing there's mosquitoes. There's literally one right by your crotch, and I'm not, I'm not swatting <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> RKO right. that Hi-ya. motherfucker. Karate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, it's funny to me, though. It, 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 it does seem funny to me that they're not trying to prove whether it's real, but they're trying to prove whether it's fraud, which kind of in the same, right. in, in one sense is the Proves same that thing. that it's real or not. Right. But it, but yeah. it, it doesn't actually, it's way more important to prove the existence of the supernatural entities but like they, that. You can't legally say we're here to prove the, the existence of, of the supernatural, but you can say we're here to prove if this woman is defrauding the public or not. Uh, yeah. Is she taking money? With lies. and But by proving or not, if she's a fraud, you are uh, you are proving the existence of the supernatural. Because if she's not a fraud, then ghosts exist and sh- shit's crazy. But if she is a fraud, then uh, you die when you're dead and you're dead. And another layer, if you prove that ghosts and spirits exist, then you also prove the existence of a human soul. Which therefore proves mm-hmm. the existence of a higher. It's it's a whole chain. Like it's you, a bunch of shenanigans. Yeah, no, is what you, it is. Look, I, 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 I honestly don't think that the existence of a quote unquote soul, which could just be your personality, uh, I don't think that that proves the existence of a, a higher. A lot of people would though. Uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of people. A lot would. of people pretty would much take any this mention of like directions. a soul or spirit is tied to religion. Yeah. I mean, uh, most most people uh, finding out that. You know, if there was a higher power or not, uh, they're they're all in AA because <laughs> they make you say that shit in AA, and that's fucked up because yeah, I don't that, believe yeah. in that shit, and they R-A-N-A. made me stand up and say that I believe in a fucking higher power. Sweet man, I just killed one in the exact same spot. Um, we are some <laughs> mosquito murdering fools out nice. on this veranda. That means tonight. we're only creating stronger mosquitoes. We're only killing the ones that are slow and dumb enough to be no, killed. We're gonna we're gonna do a seance afterwards, and we're gonna talk to the ones that we killed, <laughs> and just we're gonna ask them. Hey, mosquito, yeah. cool mustache. That's right. Well, you're also adding. <laughs> My wings are up here. You know, you're adding the murders to the show because originally we didn't have any. So, bam, bam. Holy shit! That's right. There you go. But we have uh, uh, all we need is. Hey, what's that in the sky? There we go. We got the UFO part taken care of too. <laughs> Oh, what is that in the sky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you guys seeing this? You just hear explosions in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. Guys? It's on the news. Holy shit. Aliens destroyed a small city in Louisiana. Makes sense. That's right. So, on that on note, On a lighter though, note, this podcast is, <laughs> has fucking blown up and been huge because it recorded it. It fucking I'm sorry. recorded it. Hey, yes, while we were bullshitting about it, about <laughs> to be happening. Um, that's right. 
So no, you know, on that note though, I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and break it off right there because um, the next, the the next and final episode will be uh, the trials and such, which might not even take up a whole episode, Ba-boom. but I'm I'm sure there'll be enough oh, we'll to talk it. about. We'll make um, it take up a whole episode. I, I have I've got to pull up the Law and Order uh, uh, <laughs> sound. Just have a soundboard just yeah, dum, dum. <laughs> yeah, because that is going to fucking rock next week. I like I I am genuinely very very excited for the trial uh because i think we are gonna find out uh we're gonna find out more about um the the business end of it and what's going on what what the what the fuck is she getting out of it kind of deal well we'll definitely have Uh, a a celebrity guest appearance uh for the trial you did say that somebody somebody says uh uh, tom fool yes yes and uh you said some (laughs) I'm see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Mark Twain. <laughs> I'm gonna say Mark Twain said it's, it. It's close. It's so. Close. On a side note, I wow. I do have some closing statements yes. of this episode, which probably don't need to be said, Brown. but I feel very strongly about this. Uh-huh. If you claim to be a psychic and you take people's money mm-hmm. during, uh, if they're coming to see you to talk to dead people, it's during the most vulnerable time of that person's mm-hmm. life, and you're taking their money, you are one of the biggest pieces of shit. Yeah, you are one of the you're taking advantage of people during a very vulnerable time in their life, and not even doing a pro bono. You're making money off of them. Yeah, right. Like exactly. making them think that oh my god, mm-hmm. I'm actually able to talk to my dead wife or dead sister or whoever. Like you're a major that, piece of shit. That is absolutely a total emotional upskirt, which yeah. I I threw into the show earlier. Yeah, and, no, uh, we're making it a thing. Yeah, that's I, a, that's a, a phrase that I'm I'm coining. Uh, Chris is uh, it, Melissa and I looked it up. That is nowhere uh, on the internet, not even on the Urban Dictionary, which, as we all know, is the place to go. Yeah, if you're For going places, not real <clears throat> quotes uh, or terms. So. Use it in your daily lives. Just send me ten dollars when you do, and maybe you'll be able to talk to your dead relatives. Yeah, I mean, I'll do that too. I'll, I'll lie to you about that. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you ask for it, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to offer it up. I'm not going to turn down a quick buck or two. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a question of morals and all, but but beyond morals and ethics, is it really the worst thing you could do? It's not the worst thing not, you could do to someone because you're do. not technically hurting I mean, the worst anyone. If don't say it, <laughs> well, they could they could walk through the door and you could stab them in the throat and then oh, there's worse. Well, obviously, I mean, but yeah, okay, you could, so you could junko somebody. So that, I think yeah. junko is the worst thing you could do to somebody. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, so if what yeah, you tell them true. in their vulnerable time, what you whatever it is that you do for them, be it real or fake, provides them some sort of Comfort, positive closure, benefit maybe? but look what is that really that still the a piece of shit thing to do taking their money yeah okay i i when actually, you bring the, if it was pro bono James, yeah. then okay you you put on a little show you made someone feel better um and you gave them a good day but when you're what are we the wiggles money, that's when the piece of shitness comes in uh, we got no, six we kids to feed god damn it what are you talking about that's right. <laughs> Get a fucking job. Six <laughs> kids to feed and a, a limp-wristed husband that can't do anything. Bleach right. factory Get a job, only pays so much. Work at least much. 40 hours a week. Man, Bleach Factory only pays so much. That is going to be James's biography title. It's going to be the title of no, this episode. I'm writing about. No, you're writing about someone else. Okay. Is, uh, is, uh, is, it's about Bleach Factory. Uh it's it's a proper noun. That is a man that existed. His name was Bleach, and then Factory, and then he married Mall Cop. You know, I thought Bleach was a good show up until like a couple seasons in, and like only a couple seasons in, it they just started getting drags ass, man. It does, dude. Honestly, the first like three episodes of Bleach is some of the best. Oh, anime. they're great. I think the first three seasons of Bleach are fucking amazing, dude. I think immediately it starts going off the rails. If you can, like, immediately uh, they start losing track. If you can cut it's out about... the fillers and and the story arcs that had to be written just in order for the manga to catch up with the anime. Then it's a great show. You leave show. in the beach episodes. You have you have to leave in the oh, beach. Oh, always. There's there's one episode. I remember I woke up at like like one a.m. in the middle of the night and uh, Toonami was on. They were showing this episode of Bleach where like they were all 
superheroes, and one of them was like an orgasm-based superhero. Like they all had like superhero uh, costumes and shit. The Japanese, man. The they're, katakura. They're, they're, they're strange bunch. <laughs> what the fuck were they called? Like, when, when you live on an isolated island a few hundred miles away from anything else, you know, shit gets a little weird. <laughs> well, and then there was the the bombs. So and then there was the yeah shit changed after there were, that. There were the bombs. <laughs> um, so Chris, uh, I am I am absolutely like I was really looking forward to tonight because I'm interested in hearing more about Helen and uh, really I mean I don't think I could ever honestly say that I believe what she was doing is real, especially after those pictures. Oh my god! But those pictures are hard to look at. Dude, it's it's rough. <laughs> I will say that uh, I could be I could be swayed into thinking that she she believed in what she did in so far as uh, no. as uh, uh, providing a service, okay. maybe, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. but not not as. I, I, I honestly no. I think she was. I think this is a family of con artists. Uh, again, I'll wait until the last episode to give final judgment. But this is a family of goddamn con artists. I, it's it. It honestly though does seem to me that they were doing it more for entertainment purposes than. Do you want to talk to your dead husband? Yeah, yeah, no, because these are, like, they keep saying it's very uh, like. Uh, they're not getting important information. Yeah, out of they're just things. like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. I'm a ghost. Woo! Exactly. All right, peace. So I I think that that uh, that adds uh, a layer of innocence to it where it's yeah. it's for entertainment purposes. That's not as bad as claiming right. that you're letting someone talk to their dead relative. Exactly, exactly. So it's a bit different, but it's uh, it's, it's still con artists. It's still without like a uh, without a disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. Like uh, there used to be at the bottom of the Miss Cleo uh, adverts on TV. Miss <laughs> Cleo, <laughs> call me. Um, she wasn't Jamaican. You know that that fucking bitch. She was banking um, though. Con artist. But without without that disclaimer added, then it becomes a whole different thing where uh, people are being defrauded because they absolutely believe this is happening. But still, if no one is technically hurt by this, I don't yeah. I don't see the the hard crime in it. Yeah, it's not as she's bad. not cleaning but out we'll, people's we'll life see. savings no, actually, that's here. Not bad at all. If it really is right, 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 if right. If it really is all for performance, I honestly don't see much wrong with that at it's all. A, I mean, you fuckers live in New Orleans. You see people doing right. dumb shit for fucking coins on the street all the time. This bitch was just doing it. Hey, excuse don't my talk language. About those very talented tap dancers. Like sure, that. sure, yeah, sure. Man. She it was takes, just doing it in a room. It takes nerve. It takes nerve to to thumbtack. Uh, beer caps yeah, to, the to, bottom the, to the bottom of your shoes and terribly dude, dance. Shit's cr- no, it's not. Dude, I've seen some good. I've seen some really good ones. I've seen like the two little dudes no, tap dancing I've, I've with the beer can really shoes. good ones too, nice. but I have also seen the ones that have the big older brother hanging out with them that will threaten you if you don't, if you stop and watch for a minute and you don't give them yeah. money. Oof. Man. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the, the, <laughs> the human statue with the little vroom thing in his, in his mouth that paints himself all silver, he has a really cool older brother that's like eh, it's cool if you just want to hang out mm-hmm. you know? New Orleans is a I fun place if, if, if a street performer is good enough to make you stop and watch give him a dollar what if you don't have a dollar but you're like I have to see this oh, well I mean that's different but if you got a dollar you know and, and you enjoyed it give him a dollar don't be the guy you just listen to that sits another. there and breaks out <laughs> uh, breaks a 20 using his change <laughs> don't do that Oh man, that's the best is when you give him the twenty, but then you reach in and take yeah. like hey, can fives I get, out. Can I get change for He's this? Like, I'm still <laughs> giving you I am still giving you a five. Deal with it. Episode of See No, Hear No, Speak No. Oh man. <clears throat> the UFOs, the conspiracies, and the mad, mad mosquito moitas. Fuck yeah, James has surpassed me as mosquito killing god. He, has, I stepped up my game when I found out we yeah. were competing. I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> he has straight, uh, he has straight taken out maybe twelve of them to my uh, very unattentive maybe five. Oh or yeah, six. no, I lost count. It was it was serious. Like James, is mosquito killing champ. Yeah, they're gonna start putting him on the back of those trucks that they drive around Kenner instead of the the fogger machine. I can picture the, the t-shirts now. Just strap me to a truck and I'll just be yeah, like, yeah, he's just gonna be. Okay, claps are not yeah. good for recordings. No. <laughs> oh, no, I know full well what I was doing. Oh, I know. But also, 
Email us at snhnsnpod at gmail.com. <laughs> and also, comment on Podbean if you use Podbean. Because I've been reading the comments ever since I downloaded or, it. Or, and there's not many. Comment on uh, anything, really. Or the email is probably the best way. But I don't have access to that, so I can't uh, enjoy it. You can have access to it if you like. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's got a lot of my dick pics in the drive. Woo-hoo! I want access now. I want pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> um, how did he know that I called it that, Melissa? <laughs> oh, Peter yeah, Porter. Melissa was like, <laughs> <laughs> giving away all my dirty Peter little things. All right, count down. <laughs> Three, two, one. See you next time, kids. Bye, kids. It's coming like a ghost town. like bodily semen or that sort of uh, smell. Not not unpleasant, but not um, one that one would expect to have around the room, but very strong.